<laughs> All right, the next talk will be, um, I'll break it left, we'll be telling us about omega backgrounds and generalized holomorphic anomaly equations. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give you a talk, which is obviously technical. Let me um, uh, start giving uh, the uh, okay. plan of the talk. So, um, so the plan of the talk is that we first will tell a little bit what are these omega backgrounds, and then we present this generalized polynomial anomaly, and then I explain basically how to solve it, and then uh, we discuss applications to topological strings and gate theory, and then I present some conclusions. So, uh, what are these omega backgrounds? So the easiest way to uh, define them is um, <coughs> uh, that they formally give a refinement of the topological string or super young mills partition function in that uh, now you have uh, two parameters here, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. They are absolutely crucial in, the, in this talk. And <coughs> you have um, 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 a sum of these epsilons and the product of these epsilons. And uh, <coughs> J is, is uh, going to be... Um, i and j is going to be over the integers, uh, but uh, if there is an odd integer, you see already something strange happens here in the index, it becomes half integer, and in this case, uh, the symmetry between, uh, <coughs> uh, between uh, epsilon goes to minus epsilon is actually broken. So, um <coughs> so this will also play a, a role in the, in the following of, uh, in, the t in the talk. So this uh <coughs> thing has uh, interesting limits, which uh, have been um, studied a lot, namely for epsilon 1 uh, equal minus epsilon 2 equal uh, gs, it becomes the typical, the usual genus expansion of the topological string. And so here g is the genus, and uh, this is the string coupling. <coughs> and uh, this a, uh, this was, is always a uh, vector moduli, whether you apply it to topological string, then it's m maybe more common to, to name it t, but uh, in cyborg witten is, is often denote a, so I will generally denote this by a. And then there is another limit, which is, um, <coughs> is basically uh, doesn't increase the genus anymore. So it's just uh, um <coughs> one of the epsilons is zero, then the second factor anyway vanishes, and only the first factor contributes. So this is, so to say, genus zero with insertions, and this is called Nekrasov Shatashvili limit and has a simple, <coughs> and a simple quantum mechanic <coughs> integrable system appears there. Uh, there's also a relation between the parameters introduced to uh, the aldai goyoto tachikawa conjecture, namely then in this case you identify um, <coughs> the E with beta, where beta is this, uh, with this parameter which fixes the background charge in Liouville theory in this way. And uh, also in this uh, conjecture, this um, generalized um, partition function plays a big role. And <coughs> last but, uh, but not least, I mean, if you, for instance, look at not cohomologies and so on, all this refinement play a very important uh, role, as Mina explained. And, um, and so, uh, so it's, a <coughs> it's an interesting refinement of the topological string. So the first uh <coughs> um, occasion that these parameters came up was uh, actually in the localization um <coughs> uh, calculation uh, of Nekrasov instanton calculation. So what, you, what he considered it, he had a, <coughs> a, a Giesiger compactification of the moduli space of uh, self-dual instantons uh, over S4 uh, with an instanton number k. And uh, <coughs> in this case, the gauge uh, group and the space-time symmetry act on this moduli space, which is crucial for doing the localization um <coughs> in order to calculate this instanton number. So in particular, uh, the torus of uh, SO4 uh, of, the sp of the Euclidean space-time acts on the moduli space, and uh, <coughs> and is actually uh, this um, torus which is parameterized uh, in terms of epsilon one, epsilon two. So very often you see this combination epsilon plus, epsilon minus, uh, and this is related to uh, epsilon one and epsilon two in this fashion. So uh, when you do actually the calculation, then um <coughs> um, you can um, sort of uh, localized with respect to this uh, two actions. And uh, by the way, the, uh, the parameter A, uh, um <coughs> they appear because of the action of this uh, of the torus of the gauge group. And uh <coughs> then you, 
uh, I mean, this is, is, a, is a long story which I cannot explain in all details, but, uh, <coughs> but uh, what comes out is actually uh, a sum over partitions. So y1, y2 y <coughs> y are Young tableau, so it's basically a representation of partitions. And then there are, um <coughs> there are uh, these functions which, uh, which are functions on these partitions and uh, <coughs> they, uh, they yield this, uh, this partition function explicitly. So now uh <coughs> for how do you relate? So this is related, uh, of course, to n equal 2 gate 3. And how is it related to a cyberg witten theory? So for the uh, conformal cases, actually lambda is to be identified with a dimensionless coupling. Uh, <coughs> uh, which is uh, which something that we will discuss. So you have to uh, pick a special UV coupling, and it's not necessarily the coupling that appears in, Cybeck, in the cyberg witten theory. Um <coughs> and uh, for the uh, for the um, uh, non-conformal cases, uh, that is the asymptotic uh, <coughs> free cases. In this case, I consider uh, the, the lambda will be just uh, this uh, the scale of this theory. Now, what's also <coughs> uh, important is that this s. There is basically a, a copy of C n. This is the um, <coughs> is the flavor space, and we note that in the Necrosov partition function, this epsilon one to minus epsilon one is not a symmetry. That means that these guys actually don't uh, vanish uh <coughs> for the odd i. Uh, however, it was actually noticed by mathematicians uh, that um <coughs> if you, I mean. It was noticed by many people, but uh, maybe proven by the mathematicians, namely that uh, <coughs> there is a choice of the embedding of this u1 plus in the R symmetry group, and that changes the identification of the flavor mass parameter. So you have basically uh, this uh, redefinition of the flavor mass parameters, and for a row equal one, uh, this symmetry is actually restored. <coughs> and uh, this uh, choice also corresponds to the physical mass definition of uh, Aldai, Gayotto, and Tarikawa. So there is an <coughs> other important uh, picture uh, where this uh, action arises, and um, <coughs> so this um, uh, was uh, was first, uh, so to say, uh, in a in a little bit different context, invented by Gopakuma and Wafa. Uh <coughs> Namely, you um, you consider M-series compactification on S1 times a Calabi-Yau threefolds times a Taubnat fourfold. And uh, <coughs> there is now an action of this uh, two symmetry uh, of this uh, u1 uh, of this epsilon parameters in this acting in this um, <coughs> I mean parameterizing these two u1 groups on Tn. Uh <coughs> I mean it could, for instance, be just uh, c2, and uh <coughs> and it uh, acts in the following way. Now the supersymmetry <coughs> in the compactification requires that epsilon one is ep minus epsilon one. Unless you have an additional u1 that's acting on the threefold, uh, <coughs> and then supersymmetry is preserved, and then actually the BPS counting makes sense. And uh <coughs> since uh, Calabi-Yau uh, manifolds, um <coughs> at least uh, the ones uh, that we usually consider, don't uh, allow for u1 actions, uh, we have to go to non-compact Calabi-Yau cases where uh, where this um, where this makes sense. So now um, <coughs> these BPS states they uh, can be uh, uh, recaptured. Uh, <coughs> I mean the, the topological uh, partition function can be recaptured in terms of these BPS states, which have a charge, which here is taken to be uh <coughs> out of H1 of the Calabi-Yau in Z, and they have a spin in SO4, which again <coughs> I decompose in this way, <coughs> and then uh, they have, of course, a mass. So this is for type 2a theory would be this mass formula. But if we uh, go to the mirror picture, then the mass formula uh, would be this one, where now uh, gamma 3 is an element of H3 mz. And then, uh, of course, they have a multiplicity um <coughs> of um, charge and spin representations. So um <coughs> the <coughs> so the the later is counted by an index by an BPS index, and uh, <coughs> it is this index which has to be well defined in order uh, to have uh, something that you really can count and for which you uh, need the supersymmetry. <coughs> now the <coughs> the m in this index, so so you organize everything uh, in terms of this spin representation. So the uh, these multiplicities have a, uh, uh, carry 
an index of the charge, and then they carry uh, this uh, spin representations. And the uh, <coughs> m plus is just the highest spin in, in a given spin multiplet. So now uh <coughs> there are various ways to you can do this, but uh, this uh, way that Gopa Kumawafa sort of say uh, promoted it was to use a Schwinger loop calculation, and uh <coughs> and then uh, this was generalized then for this uh, for this um, for this case with uh, more general epsilon backgrounds in this paper, and you see it gives this formula. And what is apparent from this formula is that uh, this, is this is again uh, symmetric under epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. And since uh, <coughs> it is very natural to uh, geometrically engineer um, n equal 2 gauge series, um <coughs> uh, the, um, these authors of this paper, of course, uh, realized that it would not work unless you use the physical mass. And uh, so this was another observation. And then uh, later, Actually, in context with this holomorphic anomaly, Grefel and Walcher uh, rediscovered this, or and, um, and, um, and it has actually nice consequences for the holomorphic anomaly equation. So another <coughs> ingredient, so now that we have uh, the idea already that we count BPS states, uh, it is um <coughs> it's very, uh, we can use uh, of the calculation of the BPS states in the mirror picture. And in the mirror picture, we uh, <coughs> consider in particular the behavior at conifold points. And at these conifold points, uh, <coughs> we can uh, plug just in the Schwinger loop uh, calculation this singly <coughs> uh, single hi uh, light hypermultiplet, which has then the mass of a particular three cycle, uh, which actually vanishes at the conifold. And uh, this also uh, <coughs> has an uh, analog in the, in, the, in the local cases where we just have a, a, <coughs> a dual period over the meromorphic um, one form, which is the reduction of the um, 3, 0 form in the Calabi-Yau case. So this mass is given by this period integral. And uh, if you do the Schwinger loop calculation, then uh, it's very simple because you have just one state here and uh, not infinite many states as, as, uh, as in, in this formula. Uh, <coughs> and the result uh, basically is written out here. So you get uh, some leading terms which are uh, log <coughs> of AD, which is this vanishing period. And then you get um, poles in the AD. <coughs> and if you uh, take trace of the S, and S is actually epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2, and lambda is uh, epsilon 1 times epsilon 2, uh, then uh, <coughs> you can recover what leading contribution contributes to what uh, F, uh, Fn, uh, Fnm that uh, I, I introduced in the first slide. So this, um <coughs> this um, most important feature here is that the leading behavior of the Fng that you can uh, now uh, recover from this formula uh, has this uh, gap condition, <coughs> at least uh, for uh, g greater than 1, because otherwise it's this logarithmic behavior. And then uh, there is an absent of absence of subleading poles. And uh, this gap condition actually is uh, quite important when we want to fix uh <coughs> the topological string partition function. So it uh, will be uh, uh, crucial to solve uh, the models. <coughs> So this is uh, what I wanted to say now uh, for the introduction. Uh, <coughs> now we can uh, discuss a little bit the generalized holomorphic anomaly equation. So the, there is a B model definition of Fg in the case uh, of the topological string where the first index is uh, 0. And uh, this definition is uh, written out here. So what you do is you integrate uh, some uh, volume form on the modelized space of Riemann surfaces of genus G. And this volume form is uh, made from a correlator of the two-dimensional conformal field three. And uh, the two-dimensional conformal field three, in this case, has to have n equal 2, comma 2 supersymmetry. And this is uh, the supersymmetry um, uh, generators of the one side. They go in and make this thing actually uh, anti-symmetric so, uh, so that this becomes actually a form. Uh, on this modulized space uh, <coughs> over which uh, you can integrate. And then you get a result uh, which depends on uh, the, um, the moduli of the B model uh, in uh, just by uh, infinitesimal perturbations. Well, for the, um, for the holomorphic perturbations, I will not write uh, this out. But for the uh, unholomorphic perturbations, uh, you see there is this, uh, this piece of the action 
So this is now the action which depends on the holomorphic Ti. And then there is a piece of the action which uh, depends on the anti uh, is an infinitesimal deformation. And if you look what this operator is, then uh, and you insert it into this um, into this correlation function, you can easily see that this evaluates to an exact form on the moduli space. And then uh, <coughs> the and that means that this deformation receives only contribution from the boundary, and that leads to this holomorphic anomaly equation that is written down here, and this, uh, um, so to say, plays a big uh, role in, in the theory of uh, the B-model topological string, or maybe this is the decisive equation even. So uh, <coughs> if we defined uh, for g greater than 1 uh, this fng as an insertion of an operator uh, into this uh, integral, <coughs> Then and for g equals zero, uh, <coughs> the um, the insertions of four operators, then <coughs> you can see that um, that the um <coughs> that if you now uh, evaluate the um, holomorphic anomaly equation with insertions, uh, that is uh, was actually also done by uh, BCOV, uh, then you get under certain assumptions, an holomorphic anomaly equation, which is, uh, very, is extremely useful for the deformations. Namely, the assumption should be uh, that, uh, first of all, I mean, uh, this operator is a two-form operator. This is uh, done from a zero-form operator by the descent equation. And the later should have no contact term with the uh, other fields in the chiral ring. And if you assume that, then you get just this equation. And this equation is basically the uh, most important equation for our purposes, because um, it's, um, it is um, uh, it, it is what determines this whole um, um, omega background deformation. So uh, <coughs> the prime here on this sum this means the uh, omission of m h equals zero zero, and uh, and then of the maximal. So if this is the same as this uh, this one uh <coughs> in the sum. And the first uh, uh, term on the right side is set to zero if g is equal to zero. So there's no uh, negative genus. And uh, this is uh, supplemented by the normal holomorphic uh, normal equation for g equal one. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, there was actually a, a different uh, generalized holomorphic anomaly equation uh, derived by Krefel and Walcher. And in some sense, it's more uh, complicated and also interesting. But this one breaks the symmetry. And then it leads actually uh, for all these um, um, asymptotic uh, cases, not just for NF, NF equal 1, I, I check this later, to the Nekrasov partition function with the non physical masses. So, in some sense, they were uh, focusing on deriving this, rederiving this uh, Nekrasov partition function for the non physical masses. And they saw that you have to add something, and that's uh, what they added. <laughs> and, uh, but but the down uh, downside of this is that this has no obvious modular property. So if you if you uh, deal with it, uh, <coughs> then you really have to make the shift in order to see the the modular properties. So the uh <coughs> you see also that this f n zero this amplitude fulfills a simpler holomorphic anomaly equation just because the f first term on the on the right hand side uh, vanishes, and uh, this is a very a very re reminiscent of anomalous equation that uh, that count actually higher rank sheaves on surfaces. So that's something that maybe uh, should be uh, explored. So let me uh, now come <coughs> to the next uh, part of my talk, uh, namely the direct integration of this holomorphic anomaly e uh, equations. And uh, this direct integration formalism, uh <coughs> that is described below, this uh, applies to series defined by a Riemann surface. And now this is actually g hat. Uh, g prime is the genus of this Riemann surface and the meromorphic differential. And in fact, it's quite generally applicable to all the cases uh, where also uh, the uh, general omega background or the epsilon deformations have been considered. Namely, this is for gauge series. Then uh, the CG is just the seibach witten curve, and the lambda is the seibach witten differential. And then for matrix model, in this case, the CG is the spectral curve, and uh, lambda defines the fitting fractions. And uh, then uh, finally, for non-compact Calabi-Yau manifolds, in this case, CG is a special curve which features in uh, the definition of the uh, mirror manifold. Uh, so this mirror manifold is, of course, uh, three-dimensional and is given by this equation. 
uh, <coughs> and, the, uh, and the differential is just given like this. So the goal of the rest of this or of this particular section will be deri derived set and entirely from the curve without using any other data if possible. And uh, then for simplicity, we will assume that g is equal 1, uh, actually g prime, sorry, this is g prime. <coughs> and then we can uh, bring this uh, cg primes into Weierstrass form, which is written here. And then uh, it's very easy to the classical uh, geometry, uh, namely the g, this is the world g genus, this should have a prime, as I said, <coughs> is determined by the j function. And this j function has uh, simple poles at this uh, denominator, which I call delta, in the following. So uh, here the, um, <coughs> the uh, E1 and E2 are the normal Eisenstein series of weight uh <coughs> 4 and 6. And, uh, and then uh, there are actually quite neat formulas uh, for everything that has to do with this, uh, with this curve. So for instance, the, um, <coughs> the integral over the holomorphic period, which in cyberg witten is given by the ADU, where U is the parameter that features in this curve, is just uh <coughs> given by uh, by this uh, expression. So you see it's, uh, <coughs> it's, a, uh, <coughs> it's a, weight, um, a weight one form, and that uh, means it fulfills a differential equation of order two. <coughs> and so uh, this determines already the prepotential and the metric on the moduli space and the three-point function. So the genus zero sector is just uh, given by well-known formulas uh, in the book on elliptic curves. <coughs> So what is about the n plus g equal 1 sector? So f10 has actually no holomorphic anomaly um, <coughs> because uh, it still has not enough insertions. And it's uh, determined by the boundary conditions. So the Schwinger loop calculation actually suggests that it has this behavior. So that is, uh, was in the previous slide. And uh, the re regularity at other singularities uh, dictates that it uh, then has to be the logarithmic, uh, the logarithm of this uh, delta, because uh, in first order this delta uh, is linearly um, <coughs> in uh, AD. And then there could be a function in, the, in this, um, in this um, uh, UV gauge coupling, which you have to uh, um, uh, restrict by regularity as at other singularities. So the <coughs> f01 uh, is uh, obtained by integrating the g equal 1 holomorphic anomaly. And uh, there at the conifold, you get this behavior. And consequently, it has uh, this factor in its holomorphic piece. And if you write it uh, the non-holomorphic form, it looks like uh, this. And as a matter of fact, uh, here I should also have put a factor g of q, uh, which is also determined by behavior at uh, infinity. <coughs> So uh, <coughs> the n uh, plus g greater than one sector is now uh, det uh, basically determined by uh, the holomorphic anomaly. And it's uh <coughs> sufficient to note for this elliptic curve that this um, covariant derivative, which features in the holomorphic anomaly equation, is basically the mass derivative. And the uh, propagator, <coughs> which uh, can be used to solve the holomorphic anomaly equation, is uh, proportional to an almost holomorphic form of this uh, type. So this is precisely the same than for the normal holomorphic anomaly equation. And the mass derivative closes on the ring of almost modular forms, almost um, <coughs> holo uh, holomorphic modular forms, whose non-holomorphic generator is just the propagator. So that means that if you uh, take a derivative with respect to tau bar, you can as well take a derivative with respect to the only generator, which is non-holomorphic, and then take the, um, take the um, derivative uh, with respect to tau and to end up with this expression. So that means, in particular, that you can re uh, rewrite the holomorphic uh, anomaly equation as an equation uh, which in which the derivative is with respect to e, uh, e tau hat, this, um, this uh, non-holomorphic generator. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, then um, I have written down the, uh, the, uh, the covariant derivatives in a very simple way uh, in this form. And, but the fact is anyway that uh, because of the closing of the derivatives on these generators, the right-hand side will be always polynomial in the generators. And it's actually convenient to write the equations in terms of u and uh, eventual masses and induce this quantity. And then this quantity is uh, the better or maybe the most uh, more useful uh, uh, unholomorphic generator in this context. 
And then you can show actually that the FGN will always have this form. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> and that's uh, you, what you see here. You see a certain uh, power of the discriminant. Uh, you see a certain occurrence of the unholomorphic generator uh, whose highest power can be uh, 3G plus N minus 3. And then you see uh, polynomials in U uh, <coughs> where uh, this um, can be written in terms of derivatives of this, uh, of this uh, G2 and G3, which are featuring in the Weierstrass form of the uh, holomorphic or of, the, of the elliptic curve. So <coughs> this is actually a, a, more, a, a piece of a more general story. So in this case, we have rigid special geometry. But special geometry uh, implies in general that the covariant derivatives on the propagator actually close on the propagator uh, with holomorphic pieces here. And uh, this makes this formalism actually applicable to, uh, to all genus. I mean, all genus, I mean, that means all rank of the gauge group, for, uh, for example and also uh, to Calabi-Yau threefolds. And this was actually pioneered by Jamaguchi and Yao, and then also uh, by, uh, by a collaboration of myself and Alim and Lenger. They analyzed uh, this. So, so this is a, is, a, is, a, is a very general story. <coughs> so let me come uh, now uh, to the fixing of the holomorphic anomaly for the uh, generalized case, or holomorphic uh, ambiguity. So what I mean in this is if you take derivative with respect to E2, then you can add here this thing is only determined up to <coughs> a holomorphic and modular piece. And uh, this one I have to fix in any case because this is, uh, this is um, not a deterministic recursive relation. So, uh, <coughs> so in order to fix this, I use again the fact that um, I use now this, uh, this, this gap condition. So we see that at the generic zero of the discriminant, a single period, uh, vanishes and gen generic is actually quite important. So if you, for instance, go to let's say an Algiers Douglas point or something where two periods become uh, singular, then uh, this will not have this behavior, and you cannot use uh, this condition. So, <coughs> so this, uh, if you have a, however, a generic zero of the discriminant uh, in this curve, then the holomorphic ambiguity can <coughs> at worst have a pole of this order uh, at uh, this critical point, and we can parameterize it in this form. Uh, and now uh, we use that also we have conditions that uh, if, if u goes to infinity, that uh, thing stays regular. And that implies that pu is a polynomial in u of a certain degree, namely of the degree uh, 2g minus 2 times the degree of the discriminant minus 1. And, uh, <coughs> and now it's, uh, it becomes clear that these uh, 2g uh, plus g minus n times dg coefficients in pu are exactly fixed by this gap condition because we get uh, exactly this many uh, conditions at every zero of the discriminant. And since the discriminant has as many zeros at its degree, uh, you, uh, you always can fix it. <coughs> so this uh, means that for these local cases, you can indeed always fix this thing. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> and now there are some applications. So, um, <coughs> so the applications are basically um, topological string and non-compact threefolds. So an example from this paper with Mingxing was uh, just this uh, O minus 3 over P, P1, <coughs> uh, P2. And then uh, this uh, mirror curve is parameterized uh, by x and y. This is the modulus. Uh, this is the holomorphic differential. And then in genus 0, we can, for instance, write the Yukawa couplings. And for higher genus, uh, we have now uh, the genus 1, uh <coughs> the genus 1 uh, uh, function and this uh, genus uh, and then this n equal 1 function. And that means now that you can uh, take the holomorphic anomaly equation and write immediately down uh, the higher uh, g pieces. And uh, <coughs> now uh, if you uh, use the mirror map at singular points, which can be different, so to say at the conifold at the orbifold point or at infinity, then you can make predictions uh, what are uh, for instance, the refined uh, BPS invariance at infinity, and what are the uh, refined orbifolds BP BPS invariance. And uh, for instance, for large radius, if you take this mirror map, then you find this result from the topological vertex, which was first obtained by Iqbal, Kozak, and Wafa, uh, casted now in, in terms of gamma-3 modular forms, so all order in the modulus. And as I said, at least for the Riemann surface, a <coughs> case, uh, the, this, uh, this gap condition is sufficient. You can, in principle, uh, <coughs> uh, calculate it to all orders. 
uh, and then uh, other uh, other non-compact geometries, for instance, uh, uh, <coughs> canonical bundle over Hirzebruch surfaces, have been also checked in this paper uh, that I cited at the at the beginning with Ming Xing uh, <coughs> in last October, uh, last um, September, I guess. So now it's come to the uh, application to gauge three. And in this uh, case, it's actually sensible to start with the conformal cases, because the conformal cases, uh, <coughs> once you have the conformal case, you can take limits uh, <coughs> in uh, the gauge coupling and the masses so that the non-conformal cases just uh, uh, come out. So for instance, if you take NF equal four and you consider a mass in a limit in the coupling constant and uh, one of these masses, then you get the, uh, <coughs> the scale of the uh, NF equals three series and the rest of the masses play uh, just the role of the masses of the NF equals three series. So once you have the result for this cases, you get uh, all the others for free. <coughs> so now uh, let me start uh, now with N equal four with, a, with an adjoint uh, hypermultiplet. And that is uh, one, I mean, this is an N, N equal four spectrum is of course conformal. And then we get uh, the following uh, curve where these are the half periods, which are related to the theta functions in this uh, way. And, uh, <coughs> and now you can actually uh, introduce cross ratios. And uh, once you introduce this cross ratio, you have a <coughs> nicer algebraic picture of your curve, uh, namely uh, something like this, where this is now the cross ratio, so you don't have to deal with the theta functions anymore. <coughs> now, uh, if you <coughs> uh, eliminate uh, JQ in, f in favor of the infrared coupling, uh, then you get uh, Nekrasov's partition function for zero, zero on the nose. Uh, <coughs> if you uh, express lambda as Q, which is the infrared coupling, and, uh <coughs> and after shifting the masses. And uh, in this case, <coughs> the theory is truly conformal, and that means that the infrared parameter is actually with, uh, identified with Nekrasov's uh, ultraviolet par parameter. What, however, what you have to do is you have to uh, do something to the masses in this curve. So actually the masses that appear in the, uh, in the BPS formula uh, for the masses are not the masses, again, that appear in Nekrasov's formula. <coughs> so then for the higher sector, as I said, you have to be careful with, uh, with the powers of Q, uh, which are, uh, which are uh, 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 determined by regularity at infinity. And, uh, but you can uh, actually uh, determine these this functions. And now something uh, interesting happens, of course, in the massless limit, because this theory is conformal, the F01 uh, is actually zero. And that means already uh, that the holomorphic anomaly equation will say that all these F higher Fs are zero and, uh, <coughs> for, for if you increase the genus. But if you uh, increase uh, both uh, the genus and the insertion, then you get results, and uh, these results, uh, I just uh, uh, <coughs> displayed them here. Um <coughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so, th so the fact that this is all zero has, is just a, a consequence of the fact that this has no F, uh, no uh, A dependence, this, this, um, this F01. Uh, <coughs> And then what you also will notice is that actually the power of the, uh, the non-holomorphic uh, generator grows only linear with, uh, with uh, G plus N. And uh, um, <coughs> so for the massless case. Of, however, you have to uh, keep in mind that I have to put anyway the masses in order to, to resolve all the zeros. So otherwise, I cannot uh, use the gap condition because if I don't uh, perturb by the mass, then the spectrum, uh, what will come down is always a conformal spectrum. And for the conformal spectrum, I don't know exactly what happens. So actually perturbing by the mass is so to say, uh, is so to say a trick to, um, <coughs> to, um, to analyze spectrum at individual singularities and also to learn something about uh, the conformal points. So, <coughs> so the, um, if, you, if, you, if, you do the if you if you do the masses, then of course, you get the usual uh, behavior of the uh, you get the usual behavior uh, of the uh, growing of the unholomorphic generator in this expression, and then uh, you can uh, do a scaling limit uh, in the remaining mass in the gauge coupling to get the SU2 super Young Mills series. So in in this way, 
uh, yeah, solving the conformal cases, so to say, is sufficient to solve them all. And uh, the conformal cases, however, have to be solved with the masses because otherwise I cannot, uh, <coughs> I cannot uh, restrict to the, I cannot, so to say, um <coughs> uh, get the boundary conditions um, appropriate. So for the SU2 n equal four with four uh, fundamental hypermultiplets, the situation is a little bit uh, <coughs> different. So here we have, um, <coughs> well, I mean, let me uh, just say that they both can be, uh <coughs> this conformal series can be all, uh, both of them can be um, constructed from the Enriquez Calabiao, uh, whose fiber over uh, K3, this is this Enriquez surface, has this lattice. And now the n equal four gauge bosons, they're actually in uh, sitting, coming from this lattice, and the NF equal, uh <coughs> for the NF equal four, the gauge boson come from this lattice. And uh <coughs> these are two reductions in the vector multiplet space, and the first is actually valid at large scalar parameters, while the second, in the second, the volume of the Enriquez is shrink to zero. And <coughs> what we actually found in this, um, in the analysis of the Enriquez is that uh, the massless curves are in both cases the, um, the torus. Uh, but in one case, the infrared parameter is just um, uh, uh, identified with the, with the complex structure T of the torus. And in the other, it's uh, identified with the mirror map. So in this case, we have the situation that we have a little um, discrepancy between the infrared coupling and the ultraviolet coupling, which is basically given by this relation. And uh, <coughs> now we can, uh, so to say, uh, look at the deformed curve, which in some sense, uh, yeah, you have to, it's not very complicated to derive this from the given curve of uh, Seiberg and Witten. Uh, but again, you have to rescale uh, the masses. And, uh, <coughs> and here you have the situation that the infrared coupling is not the ER coupling is not actually identified with the UV coupling. Uh, however, the modular properties are always with respect to the infrared coupling. So in some sense, the parameter that occurs in Nekrasov's partition function in this case, again, is not uh, good for modular invariance. So, the <coughs> so what you get in this case is that, um, that the FGs, uh, again, uh, by, uh, 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 basically are just holomorphic objects. And the holomorphic limits of this, uh, sorry, for F1, uh, zero is a holomorphic object. Here is a, ho a holomorphic limit taken. Uh, so this um, comes from a non-holomorphic object. And um, <coughs> again, you have uh, these properties uh, that uh, you can uh, immediately calculate at the F, uh, the higher FGs. So um <coughs> maybe I should uh, come to the conclusions. So the conclusions are uh, simply that um, this generalized holomorphic anomaly equation is, uh, is extremely simple. And, um <coughs> and uh, together with the gap condition, it allows to determine the partition function of physical systems, which allow for this epsilon 1, epsilon 2 refinement. These are uh, non-compact Calabiao uh, manifolds. I mean, this, uh, this is the one example I, I had. Then these are the n equal 2 gauge series. And then there are also matrix models with beta uh, ensemble measures if the polynomial is potentials, uh, if, if the polynomial is actually, uh, 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 if this potential is polynomial. So, and then they sort of uh, describe this FGs um, in, I mean, they recast them all in modular functions. Uh, and this modular functions are to say global expression over the modularized space. That is, you can uh, analyze these expressions at every point in the modularized space that you wish. And, uh, <coughs> and so it's, um, it's a relatively neat way to solve uh, this series. And um, it's, for me, it's surprising that it's so simple and that yet there should be so much in this, um, in this uh, deformation. So, f uh, I mean, for instance, you can also sort of look at the Neckers of Shatashvili limit. And then uh, <coughs> if you look at this sine Gordon uh, equation that, uh, that, um <coughs> that Losev, uh, no, sorry, that, um, that, um <coughs> Um, Marshakov, no, who was it? Well, so it was, I think. Yeah, so uh, so if you look look at the at the at the sine Gordon equation, then you can immediately use this modular expression to show that this is uh, has to be true to all orders, and um, yeah, this is also something that uh, that we are investigating in this paper, which uh, is not yet finished. So maybe I should end here. <laughs> Certain OM 
brand. Uh, if you go to the day model side, which is something that could function in that going to yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an open question. I mean, what I said is just if you have a corner insertion and you work with this corner insertion, then, uh, then you get a holomorphic anomaly equation which is just right. And the interpretation in terms of, um, of topological strings is still mysterious to me. But, um, yeah, as I said, I mean, uh, as simple as it is, it reproduces all the results which, um, which have been obtained. COV has this reinterpretation where you sort of sum up all the FGs and, and write it as a heat equation, something that looks a lot like a heat equation. Uh, is there some natural equation that? Yeah, I think something, something like this has been, uh, has been discussed uh, by the recent paper of, um, of Mina and Kumrum and Kressel and Cheng and Digraph. And uh, <coughs> I, I think uh, there is a wave function interpretation for the closed string in this case. Um, so that's uh, you can recast this in this uh, in this in this matter, and um, yeah. So that 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 there should be something like a like a like a like a, a heat 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 operator acting annihilating the string. But uh, of course, such a thing just uh, recaptures the transformation properties and doesn't uh, recapture the boundary conditions, which is necessary to fi fix actually the wave. So in this sense. Still to do so. Um, can you apply your methods to the Yahan and Chansky theory? It also has a genus one cyber group. Yeah, I mean, in, in principle, um, if, uh, I mean, Mina, Minahan, Nemechansky theory, they have uh, a lot of deformations, of course, yeah. uh, massive deformations of them, but there's no problem in principle. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> Because uh, you, I mean, what I have a little bit suppressed is that uh, that this uh, coefficients which come in front of the x. I mean, I have not com uh, suppressed it completely, but you can maybe guess it from here. That this expression, which so to say multiply the x, can be so to say uh, ugly uh, rational functions, and there will be now ugly rational functions in the modulus plus the masses. <coughs> but in principle, it will work similar like for the NF equal four case. I mean, uh, again, then there are a lot of masses flowing, floating around, but the principle is. Um, yeah, no, actually, I'm sure it's a blue <laughs> Thank you.